I All right, go on. Tell me about the tell me about the scientific method. I don't know what as you there's, put in your clerical. There's a couple uh, different things. In it. You I'm going observe. for authority as I explain science. <laughs> Let me get this in. All right, trust is science. That's what we got to do. Uh, uh, obser- observation. Uh, uh, observation. And I think you make uh, a hypothesis, right? Uh-huh. And then, uh, yeah. then you you test said hypothesis, uh, hypothesis, right? Uh, that's, and that's the right way of saying it, right? And then from there, uh, if if your uh, if your uh, your your tests uh, 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 agreed with your hypothesis, um, then you can go ahead and make a theory about it, and then you continue to try and poke holes in that theory. Uh, but if if your uh, if your experiments do not uh, fall in line with the thing that you hypothesized, um, then you got to make another hypothesis. Is I think that's pretty close to the scientific method, man. I haven't taken a, a science class since <laughs> my first year at Concordia Seward, and let me tell you, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're just making sure that whole bit gets thrown out is what you're trying to do there. I see it. <laughs> no, no, no. That bit can stay in. Uh, I'm not telling you it was because of the, the professor's fault. I don't even know who the fr- professor was. It was a physics class. I don't know who it was. Um, but I wasn't becoming a science major, right? I had to do one one class, uh, three credit uh, science, uh, uh, you know, thingy. You get your, just like you have to do your math thingy when you're getting a history degree. Which, let me tell you, means nothing. Um, Do you have a history degree? Yeah, I got history and theology. Double major, man. I didn't know you had a history degree. Double major. You put in a surprisingly low amount of effort to double major. That's actually impressive. Yeah, there's a lot of double dipping in those (laughs) history theology classes. I suppose. It's pretty clever on your part. I know. It looked good on the resume. Not that I've ever. And then you never had to apply for a job in your whole life. Never showed anybody my double major from Concordia Seward ever. I didn't know you had it. I've known you for many moons now. There you go. It's that that important. The more you know, the more. They don't do that anymore. They should. I don't know. How often do you sit down and you watch uh, NBC uh, uh, Saturday morning uh, cartoons? Because that's what I it was on. If they would keep teaching me stuff like how communism is bad, um, <laughs> which was what most of it was dedicated towards. It was. Yeah. It was great. It's like, yeah, you're right. I'm nine, but I don't I don't like I this. understand. Free market system is is best indeed, G.I. Joe. Thank you. Um, <laughs> right. I understand that uh that uh, the, the the cobra people are bad. They're evil <laughs> communists who wanna Take all of my uh, my goods. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the thing at hand. Or... What's that? The Gospel of Mark. <laughs> the reason we're doing this pod. I mean, the 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 reason we put on paper for doing this podcast because recording ourselves while we hang out <laughs> and then editing away all the inappropriate parts. It's... Well, that's just it. I mean, being good friends, uh, uh, we have to have a, a reason for uh, every week to uh, talk to each other for 45 minutes. And so if you turn on a, uh, a camera and say you're doing a podcast, then, then everybody's okay with it. Like, yeah, all right. I don't know if everybody's okay with it so much as apathetic, but um, so cares. that we do not offend the listener. Uh, uh, listen, no, we just we just put this on the the tube, right? We've got more than a listener. I mean, not we many might have more. a viewer too, but yeah, <laughs> not, all right, not many more, but we got a couple. You want you want to talk about the rich young man today? Uh, yeah, I hope your coffee is lukewarm. I don't know why, but I just want mediocre you know, things if, for you. You know that rich young man? He must not be a communist. Yes, yeah, true. A, yeah. No, just, Anyways, never thought about it that way. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you think they have to change this parable uh, when they right preach for it the Bolsheviks, the Soviet bloc, right? The Leninists, right? Probably. 
they're like, oh, we dodged a bullet and <laughs> we should have. <laughs> well, listen, not Except many for people. for the literal not, bullets that are not there. Not many um, people dodge ahead. bullets in communist Russia. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> One of us had to. Glad both of us went for it. So it's not actually about money. Uh, we're gonna, Wait, we're gonna are you going to tell people it. where we're at? We're gonna, I'm going to start. Just, just I have to sound out the words. Uh, we're in the Gospel of St. Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 17, reading from the English Standard Version. And as he, being Jesus, was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions and Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, how difficult will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with man, it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. And Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mother and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You know, I uh, while you're doing that, I was googling scientific method. I pretty much nailed it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, there's really? a, there's some. Uh, it said, uh, "What is it? It's question, hypothesis, experiment, data, uh, conclusion." Right. Um, I pretty much, pretty much got. It. I mean, it did, I did use the right term, but I pretty much uh, explained it right. I mean, we can say that that was for the bit because of your pronunciation of hypotheses as is, is. Right. But. Is, is. All right. So what are we going to talk about? I want to talk about, uh, can I just jump right to the middle and then we'll work our way backwards with ADHD? That's the only way to do it. This is the way. <laughs> um, so Jesus, after saying only um, it, it is easier for a, a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to be saved. And the disciples' immediate response is, well, then who can be saved? Um, as in they consider themselves rich. I, I think sort of the easiest way to look at this parable is to say, well, this is clearly talking about like Steve Bezos. This is this is talking about people who have gone to Epstein Island, who have uh, so much money that they have uh, just given themselves completely over into the way of the demons and the world and the own sinful flesh. Uh, because nobody who who can be this wealthy clearly didn't sell their soul to get that way. Uh, but but rather the disciples who have lost everything, who are going from town to town without any real possession to take note of. They consider themselves too rich then already. I, I think this is important because we, we so quickly jump on the bandwagon of, well, like rich probably does include me. Do you think that's where it's at? Do you think that's not where it's at? So wh where are you putting the, where are you putting the apostles? I, I think that. That it, they, 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 they think they're rich. That they're willing to sort of not use um, wealth as a, a measurement of justification. Because as soon as that's sort of prop, uh, proposed, they say that they're on the wrong side of it. And I think they most – no, mm, no, I disagree. No? Okay. I think, I think they're actually I, – I think they're still in this place of um, – See, and I, yeah, I'm going to go the complete other side. Not, I think in, in their day and age, in, in their, in their culture, um, <laughs> that, uh, if you, if you were rich, it wasn't as if you, uh, you made, a uh, 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 deal with the devil. Like, um, no, uh, it was usually uh, a symbol of God's favor. Right. Exactly. Right. 
So, so the very fact where they're asking, well, who could be saved? I maybe I'm maybe oh. I'm hearing you wrong. But no, I see like, a different kind of pickle now. You're kind of you you're getting it either way there. Aren't right. you? If, the, if the rich people, like who have obviously who been clearly favored by God, by God, they can't be saved. Then who and, can be saved? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Both are true. Maybe. Maybe. Probably more of yours, but well, yours makes okay. more sense. I still well, don't like using wealth as a measuring stick that that is synonymous synonymous with justification, though. Wait, well, obviously, think, because you're Lutheran, but the sinner in you sure does. No, because the sinner in me is is actually usually just concerned that I, I don't have enough wealth. I, I would also agree that I don't have enough wealth. And now, as a Christian sinner, I both want more wealth and not too much. So you are. You know what communist. I mean? Like if I could, yeah, if I could just be a <laughs> pagan, uh, I would I would want just wealth. But now, as a Christian, you, you have this this whole concept of neighbor, and well, this text is problematic. So yeah, now I want to be rich, but not like rich, rich. So we'll just call ourselves middle class, regardless of what we are. This upper, is lower all middle class. Well, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm thinking it's all backwards because perhaps we or the sitter within us is is focusing on the wrong thing. Right? Um Usually. surprise, surprise. Uh, and I think the the uh the sorry, the apostles are probably focusing on the wrong thing here. And maybe in a different light than we are, but maybe that's just the brilliance of 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 Jesus in using this rich man and and the camel and all that sort of stuff as his object lesson. Um, because no matter uh, the time or place, uh, he can he can use it uh, uh, to accomplish what he wants. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Are you ready to go backwards then? Yeah. So, I, the whole point is starting on the wrong premise, and that's because he he calls him good teacher. The okay. rich young man starts Ex- with Jesus as good teacher. Expound. Well, he he says, "Why do you call me good? No one can call me good, or no one can be called good except God alone." He says the one thing the the rich young man isn't quite ready to see. Nobody calls Jesus teacher unless they can't call him Lord. Um, whenever he's called teacher, it's almost always by somebody who is on the cusp of things, but not quite there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I guess I could take that there. I'm curious if he's. I mean, yes. I don't think this rich young man has has thought about it enough, which is what Jesus is showing, right? He right. he he obviously knows that Jesus is is a a very uh, uh, brilliant rabbi, right? Who's got a following of many many people, um, who probably has some some deeper insights um, than what the young man either knows himself or has heard by uh, from others, right? And so he's looking for Jesus um, as his good teacher. And maybe that good is, uh, you know, maybe that's a throwaway word. Maybe it's a, um, I'm going to, I don't uh, think it is. I'm going to pump you up a little Genesis word. Type one. Thing. No, I think it's no, 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 in no. Genesis. Yeah, but that's word. not how they, the rich young man is viewing it. That's what Jesus is saying. I don't think the rich young man is coming saying, uh, you're good, as in objectively good, uh, Jesus. And I'm, I'm ready to say that right now. I think that's what Jesus is calling the rich young man out about. It's like, yeah, no, no, you don't know what good is. Let's just, just, let's just stop the whole things right now because your whole, your whole premise and your whole question is goodness and what is good enough to be viewed uh, as righteous in the sight of God. Well, let's just let's stop this right here because I know where you're going, and you've got you're off on the wrong foot already. Well, I think no. I, I'm going to push. I'm going to push back because this this whole contention is whether or not the incarnation would happen, uh, whether or not God would become man, goodness would dwell on earth with with sinners. Because when you ask the the man what is good, um, he can't quite get rid of his wealth. He can't quite get rid of his possessions. That's good. And the teacher can be good. The idea that that creation is 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 good is easy for him to behold. Like he he would see good in the fact that he has kept all of these commandments from his youth, but that good falls short of the the goodness of a God who would become man to die for sinners. And and so again, he's, he's on the cusp of it, but, but his, his understanding of good, it can't quite conceive of a God who would actually show up for him. It's rather just sort of the best we can build in this world, which again, wealth is a sign of uh, until at last we can try and cash in our Chuck E. Cheese tokens for like that little spider ring. They don't even give tokens anymore. They don't give tickets. It's all on your stupid card. And it's a like, debit card. We we give kids a debit card for. I hate it's, it. I hate yeah. It. 
part of you can't get credit of card debt there either, no. which is and part and part of winning the stupid <laughs> spider ring was carrying around a pocket full of paper tickets that you couldn't rip up because then they yeah. Ugh. I think we're saying the same thing about Chuck E. Cheese. No, I mean I think we're saying the same thing about. Uh, <laughs> I think we're saying the same thing about this goodness. Uh, we're just coming at it from two different angles. Uh, uh, but no, y- shocking. So you've got this guy, this rich young man who is attempting to justify himself, right? I mean, th- let's just get to it, mm. get to it, right? He is attempting to justify yeah. himself. That's what he wants, and and so that's what he's asking asking Which Jesus, is right? Bad. Well, obviously, yeah. right? Or maybe not obviously, because that's what we we all try and do, but. So, yeah, read that question that he first asked Jesus again. Uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah, that's just, see, that's just the, the, the whole thing that, that it, he's starting off the question incorrectly, obviously. Um, and Inherit uh, isn't a thing you do stuff for, right? Did I just steal your thunder? No, no, I wasn't going to go that way. It's, it's all the uh, what must I do. Um, sort of stuff. And you're right. Inherit word is shouldn't like be. You're, that's a, if you're part of the family, you don't have to do anything anymore. Or right. You shouldn't. It's have not to really a healthy family. Yeah. Yeah. But he's not the only one who talks like this, right? If, uh, when you look in Luke and you, you, you hear that guy who, um, comes and says, Just hit yourself in the head with scissors. I did. Well, I was trying to scratch my head and then this got in the way. <laughs> At least it wasn't like... the sharp end. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, okay. You're already bald. <laughs> So, uh, no, uh, we see that in Luke uh, with the parable of uh, the Good Samaritan, right? The whole reason, and I'm not going to go down that, that, that uh, talk about it that much, but the whole reason that Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, at least in the context of, of Luke there, is because the guy comes and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Right? And then Jesus says, oh, you, you got to be perfect, Right. And then it's all, oh, who's my neighbor? Everybody's your neighbor all the time, blah, 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 blah. It's the mm-hmm. whole reason for doing that, right? But again, it's that guy who's trying to justify himself. And and in Luke, he, the guy even says that, or Luke will say so, right? Uh, 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 attempting to justify himself, he says, well, who is my neighbor? Well, that's what this rich young man is doing. He's attempting to justify himself, um, whether or not, and I don't think he sees uh, Jesus as, as God in the flesh here, uh, but certainly as a very mm-hmm. smart rabbi, Right. And so mm-hmm. he comes and says, okay, hey, am I am I in? I mean, I'm assuming you're in, Jesus, good teacher, right? So am I in too? And what Jesus does beautifully here is, A, he sets up the dichotomy of actually what is good. Let's not just throw around this good word willy-nilly, right? Good means perfect. Good means holy. Good means divine. Um, so don't mm-hmm. call anybody good uh, other than God himself. And so Jesus might be doing a little hat tip to himself. Um, but then also saying, hey, buddy, don't just throw that that word around. And the guy's just like, yeah, all right. Anyways, let's keep going. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what must I do? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and then Jesus, it, it's interesting. Jesus gives him the law, just like we see in um, in the parable yeah. of the Good Samaritan, except parable, parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus uses both tables of the law. And here he just brings the second table. He's only in the second. Yeah. Right. He just, what does this uh, mean? Is there something significant here? Well, I think it's something significant because in uh, in this guy's hubris of thinking he keeps the second, uh, Jesus is going to show him that he doesn't keep the first, um, the mm-hmm. first table of the law. And I think that's just Jesus' brilliance in, in all of this, right? Because the guy is, uh, Jesus lays out the, the second table, all of them, right? Or, or close to all of them. He, 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 he speaks about it in, in numbers. And then the guy uh, says, oh, yeah, um, all of these, Man. every single one I've kept for my youth, right? And then Jesus looking at him with this compassion, right? He loves him. Right. Um, which is the beautiful thing. Like he loves this uh, self-righteous, pompous sinner. Right. He's not winning an argument here. Right. He, he actually wants this guy uh, to be saved. That is wildly different than I deal with pompous people. Like, honestly, it, it's so much fun to watch them back themselves into a corner so you can give them that gotcha moment and just right. sort of feel good and about them. And then you drop the mic you. and you walk away. Right. A hundred percent. Right. And Jesus didn't want to do that. Jesus is, he loves this guy. Uh, demolishes him, right? Uh, brings him to utter despair. Um, but... 
he's doing it for a reason. He loves this mm-hmm. guy, wants him to actually understand the true uh, trueness of goodness. Trueness of goodness? Yeah, sure. The truth of goodness um, and evil and where this this young man actually is. So this young man who thinks that he is good enough in and of himself to keep the second table of law, which is a bunch of malarkey, but whatever. doesn't matter. Um, malarkey is a good word. I, well, I would Biden on that. Sorry. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> And he stole it from our president. Um, and so, he, uh, but then Jesus is like, you know, I'm not even going to argue about uh, uh, with you about whether or not you're actually serving your neighbor like you should. Um, mm-hmm. uh, how about I show to you who your God really is? Sell everything mm-hmm. you have. Just yeah. do that. And then, it, and so it's this, it's the, the most That's a difficult. really good way of saying it. It's this most difficult, impossible law for this kid, this kid to follow. And then at the same point in time, I think Jesus is then immediately, he's given him the law, right? And, and he could do this with mm-hmm. anybody. If it wasn't some rich young man, but it was this, uh, uh, some young Adonis who thinks he's the best uh, looking thing since Brad Pitt, right? And then, uh, then God says, well, uh, grow a beard and look like Goodman. And the guy's like, oh, no, I could never... I could never do that. And he walks away all dejected, right? <laughs> then, that was well done. <laughs> uh, if, if, so, no, I, I really love this, uh, both because I am ugly, but also uh, be, because what you're, say, you're saying, it's not just sort of can you give enough for your God, but can you live without your God? Um, right. he, he, it's, it's a question that we don't want to ask because we're, we're so quick to think we don't have gods. We do. And we're unwilling and un- unable to live without our God. The question is just, do you have the right one? And I think that's the issue. I think this is less about the money, although we could, it, it's the, the money is the example. And we could certainly talk about the love of money and, and, and the rich man, I have the needle and all of that. But I think more importantly, this is less about that because if your pastor is preaching this in the pulpit, um, what if you're living paycheck to paycheck? And you're like, well, this one doesn't apply to me. me. Like, I don't, ha- I, I have nothing. I, I got, that's like, awesome. I, I right. love it. Like when, when you see people who have the thing that you covet, get called out for having the thing that you covet, that feels good. Right, right, exactly. And I don't think that's what Jesus is really trying to get to. I mean, yes, that's, that's call out all sorts of uh, false gods. And the example here is, is mammon, right? It's lots of money and stuff, um, but it could be anything. And and I think that's the point here. Jesus is trying to uh, uh, bring this guy to despair by showing him, hey, you've got a God above the one that is good, above the one that uh, uh, that we see in Genesis 1, uh, who created all things. Um, yeah, uh, above uh, the guy uh, standing in front of you who is God in the flesh, Genesis 3.15, um, that you called good inadvertently. Well, you were right. Um mm-hmm. But hey, you've got another God. And so th- I think that it completely brings this guy to utter despair. It's just the hammering of the law, exactly how it should be. Um, and then I think the come and follow me is actually, I, I want to hear that as gospel. gospel. Right. Yeah. It's, it's I just well, hit you over the head uh, of the law, uh, 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 with the law. Um, you've got another God that's bigger and, and, and better than me, or at least that's what you think. Um do away with that God. And they, God, come on. I know. I That's just it. You can't. I get it. I You can't be perfect. You can't be good. You can't do away with this. God. Come follow me. Come follow me. Right. I'll do it all well, for and you. This is gospel too because of, of how he addresses Peter in almost the exact same situation, like a paragraph down the road. So Peter goes, explain this to me. And uh, we get the camel, the needle, all that jazz. Uh, but then Peter responds as, as he is uh, wont to do we have done all of these things. We have left everything and followed you, see, Lord. Um, And Jesus gives him gospel too, because I think he's actually willing to mark the loss of these things. Um, It's it's not just now that you think that you have worked your way into it, here here's your prize or 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 at least here's the law to show you you haven't, but but rather he actually comforts him with the promise that you are joined together in the body of Christ. You are joined together into the kingdom of God, into the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. He he doesn't just sort of say, yeah, but, but, but rather he actually comforts Peter, who I think is probably mourning a little bit 
just how much he has lost. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, uh, I mean, we always try and give Peter a, a, a bad time, right? Like he's the guy who jumps out of the boat and tries to walk on water. And he's the guy who uh, assists. He's never so Jesus. mad about that. What's that? What's he's he? still so mad about that. I am. Just stay I'm in good. the boat. Just I'm stay in the boat. I'm good to have a conversation with you. You remember that, that get off the shed sketch? Do you remember that from SNL? No. Just Will Ferrell yelling at kids off yes. the screen, get off the shed. <laughs> and then he sprays them with a hose. Glorious. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's you just yelling, stay in the boat. Oh, man. I'm just out. I'm on the shore of Galilee. Stay in the boat, Peter. Just... Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Nobody but, but us understands that reference. That's okay. Um, uh, yeah, you completely uh, shut down my... Uh, Train of thought there. What was I saying? I'm so sorry. I it. blame my ADHD. What uh, was I saying? Jesus is actually comforting Peter. Jesus is comforting Peter, who right. is, wants to stick his foot in his mouth. But I don't think he's actually... I, I think this is a situation where Peter isn't. I don't think it's the getting out of the boat moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's a you're not going to the cross moment. I think it's a... a I don't fully understand it, Jesus. You, okay, so you just denounced uh this guy who's rich and said i a camel and and so now i'm looking at myself and and earlier what i said well who could be saved because i always thought that the rich people were those who were blessed by god and now i'm sitting mm-hmm. here and i don't have a whole lot and none of us did and we kind of gave up everything we have and so from worldly perspectives okay explain i i don't and i don't think he's pompous i don't think he's like hey look at me i've given everything up i think peter for the first time at least it in Mark's gospel is kind of showing this, like explain it. Like I, I don't, I think I get it, but I don't fully, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's actually, Jesus is happy about it too. Like he, he likes those kinds of questions. Also, so does your pastor. Um, there, those aren't the bad questions that right. I, I struggling to get my head around this. And I feel, I feel like just a moron, but would you, would you try one more time for me? Yeah. Jesus help responds in patience. Yeah. Right. It's it, the thing is like he, he responds with gospel, but then, then he also does kind of respond in, in this whole, and remember this is coming, this is coming right off the heels again, as Mark is describing this uh, right mm-hmm. off the heels of the little children stuff. Right. And right. so it's, it's the, it's the helplessness of the little child. Right. And then this mm-hmm. guy comes in who thinks he could do it all himself. And Jesus shows him that he's got another God and he needs to follow Jesus just like a little child, i.e. be carried by Jesus all the way. And then Peter's like, I think that's where we're at. Are we like, can you help us out with this Jesus? And Jesus says, I think Jesus is saying, yes, you are absolutely. But, but unfortunately, let me, let me let you in on a little secret. Um, everybody who gives all this stuff up, it's going to happen on this earth. Like it, you're going to be persecuted. This, this, this bad stuff is going to happen, right? You're going to lose mm-hmm. father and mother and friend and sister and brother. And maybe not, you know, because of death or martyrdom, but maybe because of what you believe they're going to maybe disown you or your friends are not going to think you're that cool at, at school when you tell them you can't have the slumber party on Saturday. Cause you got to go to church on Sunday. I mean, all of these little things, you're, you're going to be losing that. But then Jesus says, no, but you will receive X, Y, and Z, which is, I think you were alluding to, and maybe you can uh, uh, mm-hmm. continue on with this. Uh, it's He's talking about the body of Christ, right? There. He's talking about uh, the uh, as the um, Book of Concord uh, will talk about, I think it's in the form of the Concord, the, the mutual consolation of the brethren. Right. Right. Yeah, that, that we are, in fact, the body of Christ now. Uh, and so when you feel alone because of your beliefs, and in fact, that's the devil at work to try and make you not aware of the gift that you've been given. You you have brothers and sisters in Christ. You have a church. Uh, you have your pastor. You, you have uh, uh, the saints who have gone before you and entered into glory. And you have the promise of the last day uh, where you'll actually see it all fully face to face. But it, it's so easy to, to imagine that we are the only one sort of feeling this way or the only one in the room who is is sort of facing these things when in reality just take them to the people that have been given to you by god in your church to to help share this this burden but also to to point you to the cross because this is the mutual consolation of the brethren um it, it's that we would actually console one another uh it, it's that we would point each other Do you hear that? that's my to the cross <laughs> that's so jazzy 
I'm not good at picking it up. No, you're going to mute it, though? <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's my no. phone. That's the, this is church phone. It's the church phone. Did you set that, or did the church set that? I know that you set that. Oh, I set it. I did have somebody call me. I did set that up for a bit. Um, no, you would have timed it better. Um, <laughs> not at the end. <laughs> Uh, hey, one last thing, because I just completely dis- derailed your uh, awesome uh, ribbon wrapping. This, you don't, you this don't need to make out. me feel better. It's okay. No, I did. I did. Uh, number 1-800-825. They're, they're the ones who ruined it. Um, but, remember when Google calls you? That was season, what, two? That was a throwback. Yeah, I think so. Google. Yeah. You talked to the guy about the podcast. Yeah, but the two per- two natures of Christ. That's right. <laughs> um, last thing that I want to mention here, right? So Jesus is saying, in, uh, uh, and I'll ask you to kind of set it up. In verse 29, right? Jesus is saying, I tell you the truth, right? No one who's left what? Like he mentions a bunch of things, like your your house and your brothers and your sister and your mother and your uh, fathers and, and uh, your children and your fields, blah, 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 blah. And then in verse 30, he says, what will a uh, hundred times as much in the present age receive what? Uh, my, mine reads different. Okay. We'll go and read it. With persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Right. But it, it goes through everything, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, at the present age, it, 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 homes, brothers, right? Blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. What does it skip? In verse 30. It skips I'm fathers. Not... Right? Oh, because you have a father in heaven. Right. Isn't that awesome? Uh, it's pretty good there. All right. All right. It's it, Jesus is saying at the beginning, it's, it's uh, yeah, you're going to lose all of these, including your father. Uh, but don't worry. In, uh, in the mutual consolation of the saints, in uh, the body of Christ, you'll receive more than you could ever imagine of, of mothers and sisters and brothers and friends. Not fathers. You already have your heavenly father. Um, That's brilliant. Well, that was Jesus, not me. Let's actually end on a high note, not a sarcastic note. We out. (laughs) You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel-rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leitzow and Harrison Goodman.